This video will recap all the events of Dark Season 3, so needless to say, it's going to be full of spoilers. There's also a lot to cover, so feel free to use the chapter markers in the description to jump around to key moments in the season. With that, let's get started. It is June 27th, 2020, and Winden, a small German town, is the epicenter of the apocalypse. Jonas watches as the love of his life, Marta, dies from a bullet wound inflicted moments earlier by his older self. While his world collapses, Jonas looks up to find another Marta, apparently from another world. Before they are engulfed by the apocalypse, this new Marta transports them to her world. Jonas finds himself in the all-too-familiar Winden Cave and demands answers. Who is this woman wearing Marta's face? She simply tells him, today's the day it all began, the day we first met, that you and I, your world and my world, form a knot that is inextricably intertwined. Marta promises to make things right before disappearing and leaving a confused Jonas behind. With nowhere else to go, Jonas heads to what should be his home. However, in this world, the small red house belongs not to the Conwalds, but to the Nielsens. In the home, Jonas sees a family photo of Marta with her mother and two brothers. Marta's father, Ulrich, has been removed from the photo. Just like in Jonas' world, Ulrich cheated on his wife Katerina with Jonas's mother, Hannah. However, in this world, he eventually left his wife to marry his mistress, who is now pregnant, and also the victim of an affair. Ulrich's new mistress is fellow police officer Charlotte Doppler. Seeking some sense of familiarity, Jonas races upstairs to what should be his bedroom. Instead, he finds Marta's room. On the wall, Jonas sees a photo of Marta with their mutual friend Bartosz and another boy, Killian Obendorf. In this world, Marta is dating Killian, the missing boy Eric's older brother. Still lost in this strange world, Jonas seeks another possible source for answers and heads to his and Marta's school. Claiming to be a student, Jonas takes a seat behind Marta. As Jonas sits, he remembers the blood on his hands. Blood from the Marta of his world a Marta that is currently lying dead on his kitchen floor. After class, he approaches Marta, but she does not recognize him and has no answers to offer. Jonas has met this world's Marta from an earlier time. She has not yet become the Marta that will rescue him and leave him alone in the Winden Cave. Killian Obendorf, Marta's boyfriend, calls her away. From their concerned teacher, Jonas learns that today is November 4th, 2019. On his world, this is the day Jonas's friend Mikkel inadvertently traveled to 1986 and grew up to become Jonas's father, Michael Conwald. However, approaching Marta again later, Jonas learns that she's never heard of a Michael Conwald. In his world, Michael would have taken his own life months earlier. But even at the cemetery, Jonas finds no mention of him. Perhaps Jonas is here on this world to ensure Mikkel never disappears to begin with. That would explain why Michael Conwald does not appear to exist. In Jonas's world, on this day, he and his friends went to the cave in search of Eric Obendorf's drug stash. Tonight, in this world, they will do the same. However, the search will be led by Killian, and instead of drugs, they will be looking for clues pertaining to his younger brother's disappearance. In 1987, in Jonas's home world, the retired nuclear plant director, Bernd Doppler, is visited by a trio of strange men. They are all the same man at different ages. Thanks to time travel, the three can coexist. They demand the nuclear plant's master key from an unsettled Mr. Doppler. Before he can call the police, they kill him. In 2019, in Marta's world, it is evening. Jonas intercepts Marta in the woods by Winden Cave. He tells her they know each other in another time. He tells her she's seen all this before. Deja vu, a glitch in the Matrix, he says. This stirs something in Marta just before the others arrive. All Jonas needs to do is make sure Mikkel does not end up in the cave and therefore does not travel through time. However, Jonas is surprised to see that although Magnus is here, his younger brother Mikkel stayed home. There's no danger of Mikkel disappearing. So why is Jonas here? Once again at a loss, Jonas heads back to the Nielsen's residence, leaving Marta, Killian, and the rest to explore the Winden Cave on their own. At the cave, they are frightened by a loud noise and flickering lights. As they run, Marta is momentarily separated from the group and in the woods sees a vision of herself covered in a black liquid, perhaps cesium, the substance which makes time travel possible. She catches up with her friends and the group heads to the Doppler family bunker for safety. Throughout the town, lights flicker and dead birds rain 
from the sky. At the Nielsen residence, Jonas visits the room where his father hanged himself. In it, he finds Mikkel safely asleep. Jonas looks up at a beam, which on his world proved sturdy enough to hold a noose and an older Mikkel going by the name Michael Conwald. At the bunker, while catching their breaths, Marta and her friends see a portal open in front of them. Out of it falls the body of a child. On the body, Marta finds an ID with the name Mads Nielsen, her father Ulrich's younger brother, the boy who went missing 33 years earlier in 1986. Leaving the Nielsen home, Jonas is greeted outside by an older woman. She's been waiting for this moment a long time. For you to come back, she tells Jonas. She explains that in this world, Mikkel never travels back in time and never grows up to become Jonas's father. In this world, Jonas does not exist. However, this world is just as doomed as his because of you, she says, and me. Jonas realizes he has just met an older Marta, aged by 66 years. Meanwhile, a much younger Marta, one who recently rescued Jonas and left him in a cave, is visiting 1888. At the Tannhaus machine factory, she finds a middle-aged Jonas. After saving Magnus, Francisca, and Bartosz from the apocalypse, Jonas inadvertently transported them to 1888. With no cesium remaining, Jonas has no choice but attempt to recreate time travel so they can return home. He has been attempting to do so since their arrival. After witnessing her die decades earlier, Jonas is shocked to see a living, breathing Marta. But she is not his Marta. She is from another world and tells Jonas that she is here to help him find the origin, the beginning of everything that went so wrong in your world, she says, and mine. That night, Marta is haunted by recent memories and wakes to find Jonas staring at her. He tells her to get changed. She does, then joins Jonas and company in the laboratory. Magnus is shocked to see his sister alive, while Bartosz and Francisca are equally surprised. However, Jonas quickly breaks the spell by telling them, she isn't Marta. Marta agrees, but frantically explains that she's here to fix everything. So you don't die in my world, and I don't die in yours, she says. Marta goes on to explain some of the differences between their worlds. In her world, Mikkel does not travel back in time. Jonas does not exist, and Francisca is mute. However, Jonas is not interested in these details right now. Instead, he demands to know how Marta knew where to find them. Her answer doesn't make sense. Jonas told me, she says. Francisca points out, I thought Jonas didn't exist in your world. He traveled there, from your world to mine, Marta replies. Jonas has no memory of ever traveling to Marta's world. He accuses her of lying and asks if she's the one who wrote the letter, the one handed to him by a younger Noah, supposedly written by Marta. As Jonas demands answers but receives none, they are interrupted by Gustav Tonhaus, grandfather to H.G. Tonhaus. Although blind, Gustav senses a visitor is present. Jonas storms off as Gustav approaches Marta and surmises she is the reason Jonas is particularly upset today. Later, Bartosz visits Marta and apologizes on Jonas' behalf. He has not been himself since their arrival in 1888. Bartosz explains that they are stranded as the device is empty, and he says it's not that easy to get nuclear fuel from the future in 1888. Marta has questions about what they are working on in the lab. Rather than answer directly, Bartosz asks her to follow him. Bartosz takes her through a doorway above which is written Sic Mundus Creatus Est. He has taken her to a secret lodge, used by a group of which Tannhaus is the last surviving member. Tannhaus and his father, as part of this group, dedicated their lives to overriding the rules of space and time. This room will one day become Adam's base of operations. Jonas is trying to arrange things the way he saw them in the future when he met Adam here. After explaining all this, Bartosz asks Marta an important question. Who is Adam? Marta, surprised that Jonas hasn't already told them, reveals to Bartosz that Jonas himself is Adam. While Jonas is stranded in 1888, his biological grandmother is visiting 1987. Katerina, after crawling through the Winden Tunnel in 2020, now finds herself three decades earlier. 
In a search for her missing son, Mikkel, she visits the Conwald residence where Mikkel lives with his adoptive mother, Ines. However, Katerina finds the home abandoned. She then visits the local school and hands out missing person flyers for her son. No one recognizes him until Katerina bumps into a young Ulrich, her future husband. He comments, maybe the madman got him after all. Katerina demands to know what he meant by that, but she receives no answer. After her future husband is whisked away by Katerina's younger self, she is helped by a young Hannah. She shares that Michael, really Mikkel, was briefly kidnapped by an escapee from the local institution who tried bringing Michael to the cave. Katerina realizes that the escapee must have been her husband Ulrich, trapped in time. After telling her husband's future mistress Hannah to keep her mitts off him and Michael, she takes off. At the police station, she pesters one of the men who works there. Why didn't he tell her about the man from the psychiatric ward? She demands to know. Growing tired of her constantly barging into the ward, demanding answers, he finally reveals that Michael and Ines Conwald are in hiding. Child Protective Services knows where he is. After the kidnapping, it was decided some time out was for the best. The madman is back in the closed ward where he's been for the last 34 years. The man reveals no other information before leaving Katerina. She heads to the institution where she is greeted by her mother, Helena Albers. Though Helena, of course, does not recognize her. However, she is moved when Katerina points out the St. Christopher necklace that she is wearing. Katerina says her mom had one just like it. Helena senses familiarity in Katerina and lets her in. Ulrich, after being stranded in 1953 and being held there for 34 years, is finally reunited with his wife. She promises to free him. While an older, time-traveling Ulrich is stuck in the institution, his younger brother Mads, still a child, is missing. In a failed attempt to find closure, the family buries an empty coffin. At the funeral, Mads and Ulrich's mother, Jana, announces that her husband, Tranta, was with Claudia Tiedemann the night their son disappeared. He had been carrying on an affair with her before she herself disappeared. If only you'd put as much energy into finding your own son as you're wasting on finding your mistress. Then maybe Mads would be back by now, she says. When Tranta feigns confusion, Yana drops the contents of his bag on the floor, showing newspaper articles and other artifacts he's collected in the search for Claudia. This young Tranta is of course unaware that she is currently stranded in 2020 in a post-apocalyptic Winden. Tranta, sufficiently shamed, leaves the house. Continuing his search, Tranta visits Claudia's secretary, Jasmine, and asks about the days before her disappearance. She mentions that Claudia was visited by a strange older woman. Afterwards, the usually well-put-together Claudia seemed to grow sloppy and unhinged. Tranta and Jasmine are unaware that this older woman was an older Claudia, sending her younger self on a journey through time. On his drive home, Tranta sees Claudia's daughter, Regina, and offers her a ride. He asks if, before her disappearance, Claudia said anything about him. Regina says no. Distantly, Tranta remarks, I just thought maybe she'd said something. Regina asks to be let out so she can walk the rest of the way. At the nuclear plant, Jasmine is getting ready to leave for the night when she is visited by the same trio that killed burned Doppler. Hell is empty and all the devils are here, the middle-aged man says before killing her. That evening, Tranta's wife Yana tells him that at some point he has to choose if he is for his family or not. Evading this ultimatum, Tranta mentions that he saw Regina today. In response, Jana shares an incomplete and uncomfortable thought. I've wondered all these years if she, Claudia never said who the father was. You're right, Tranta says. I have to decide. He takes Jana's hand, seemingly rededicating himself to his family. 33 years in the future, in 2020, the missing Claudia is fending for herself in the post-apocalyptic Winden, while taking care of an ill Regina. Claudia leaves her daughter to continue her work. In the bunker, she is mapping out the complicated ties between Wyndon's residents, trying to understand how everything is connected. She also leaves tape recordings where she theorizes that stabilizing the God Particle could be a way to travel back in time, a way to save everyone. 
In 2053, these tape recordings will guide a young Jonas. While Claudia is away, her daughter Regina is left unattended. An older Tranta pays her a visit. I'm so sorry, he says, but it has to happen. She said it's the only way to save you. He then smothers her with a pillow. The woman he believed to be his daughter is now dead by his hands. Navigating the same ravaged Winden, Peter brings his daughter Elizabeth to the containment zone around the nuclear plant, while a young Noah follows. Inside, they search for Peter's wife, Charlotte, and his daughter, Francisca, among the many photos of dead bodies discovered in the town's wreckage. They are unsuccessful. Optimistically, Peter says this means they may still be alive. Elizabeth wonders if maybe they traveled through time, and that's why they are gone. Continuing their search, Peter and Elizabeth head to Jonas's home. Peter heads upstairs, leaving Elizabeth alone. Noah reveals himself and approaches Elizabeth. He's looking for food, he says. Doubting his ability to understand sign language, Elizabeth writes on a scrap of paper that she is looking for her mom and sister. Then she asks Noah where he sleeps. He writes, cave. Peter returns. He is angry to see Noah. We want nothing to do with you, he says. Before leaving, Noah ominously tells Peter, you want to protect her, I know, so do I, and I will, after you were killed. Back at their trailer, Elizabeth demands to know what Noah said at the house. Peter, looking to protect his daughter's innocence, says nothing. Frustrated, Elizabeth insists she is no longer a child. She wants to know why Peter carries the Triketra notebook everywhere. She wants to know where her mother and sister are. Peter promises that they'll find them. Young Jonas, still stranded in another world, has been brought to older Marta's lair. She ruminates on the illusion of free will as she walks towards the Adam and Eve painting on her wall. Beneath it is a Winden family tree etched into her marble floor. She explains that things in this world do not happen in the same way or at the same time as in Jonas's world, but they happen nonetheless. Most importantly, the apocalypse happens too. In just three days, about seven months ahead of Jonas's, this Marta's world will end. In 1888, in Jonas's home world, Gustav Tannhaus is on his way into town to send a telegram informing the world that time travel is real. After his father spent a lifetime trying to prove as much, Gustav met Jonas and saw it was all true. He holds a pocket watch labeled For Charlotte and a copy of the play Ariadne in his hands. His trip is brought to a stop by the trio, the same unknown man that killed Bernd Doppler and Jasmine. Gustav Tannhaus meets a similar fate. After the unknown man informs him that they will not allow word of time travel to spread, he kills Tannhaus. At the Tannhaus machine factory, Bartos has just learned that Jonas is Adam. He angrily confronts Jonas, demanding he tell Magnus and Francisca the truth, that he tells them who really killed Marta. Jonas tries to evade confrontation and leave, but Bartos follows him and they fight. Magnus breaks up the fight and Bartos reveals the truth. Jonas is to blame for everything. It's him. He's Adam, Barto shouts. He is Adam. Later, Jonas visits Marta and asks why he has no memory of visiting her in her world. She does not know. She also claims not to have written the letter Jonas received from Noah, who claimed it was written by Marta. After the questioning, it's Marta's turn. She asks what Sigmundus is. Jonas explains that it was a movement Tannhaus's father was a part of. He hoped to create time travel and bring his wife back from the dead. He believed time travel would bring salvation, but, Jonas says, it only brings damnation. Marta tells Jonas that she wants him to trust her. As a show of faith, she brings him to where she buried her time travel device. From it, she gives Jonas the last of her cesium to assist in his experiments. She claims that by doing so, she's given up her ticket back home. While Jonas reruns the experiment, briefly stabilizing the god particle, Marta leaves. She lied. This was not the last of her cesium. She uses some of her remaining stores to transport to another time. 
leaving Jonas behind. A younger Jonas, still in Marta's world, continues listening to an older Marta's ruminations. She and Jonas are Adam and Eva, she says, and he is here to save both of their worlds. However, if he wants to accomplish this and get his Marta back, he'll have to play his part in turning this world's young Marta into Eva, the older Marta that stands before him. Although sick of having to do things, Jonas will do whatever it takes to get Marta back. With his new mission accepted, Jonas leaves. Afterward, the trio arrive in Eva's lair. They hand over the spoils of the recent murders. The pocket watch, the Ariadne play, the nuclear plant master key, and a diagram of the nuclear plant's volume control system. The middle-aged man says, You could have told him which path you were sending him down, how it will end. Marta replies, he will never stop trying to break this cycle. He'll never understand that we must preserve the knot, that his Marta has to die, so all the others can live. At the police station, this world's Ulrich gives his team a rundown on the unidentified body discovered at the bunker. He is not ready to believe that it is his younger brother's corpse transported from 1986 to 2019. However, as he lists belongings found on the child, he finally breaks down before mentioning the ID that was found, the one with his brother's name on it. Charlotte asks Wooler to finish the meeting and escorts Ulrich to the evidence room where he can gather himself. There, Ulrich reveals his theory that whoever kidnapped his brother held on to his belongings for 33 years and planted them on this boy. Then, he tells Charlotte that he became a cop so he could do a better job than the drunken moron that botched the case of his missing brother 33 years earlier. However, he's just as bad, Ulrich realizes. His marriage is ruined, and he is cheating on the woman he cheated on his wife with. I can't do this anymore he tells Charlotte. Later, Ulrich's current wife, Hannah, suspecting an affair, comes to the station to investigate. She already ruled out Ulrich's ex-wife, Katerina, as the culprit. However, getting close to Charlotte, she matches Charlotte's scent to Ulrich's sweatshirt and becomes convinced she is the mistress. In her vindictive way, Hannah visits the nuclear plant director, Alexander Tiedemann, who is currently mourning the loss of his wife, Regina. She was taken by cancer. For 33 years, Hannah has held on to evidence proving Alexander is living under a stolen identity. Hannah shows him this blackmail and demands he uses his power to destroy Charlotte's life. Meanwhile, Charlotte conducts her own investigation into the Doppler bunker where the unidentified body was discovered. There, she finds something strange. A coin on a red cord which, at a glance, seems identical to the one her father-in-law Helga wears. As she questions her husband Peter about his father, they are interrupted by a call from the police. Apparently Helga has confessed to killing the child. At the station, Peter and Charlotte find Helga repeating over and over that he killed the boy. As Charlotte and Peter question him, Ulrich arrives in a fury. He believes Helga killed his brother. Helga provides no clear answers but seems shocked to see Ulrich alive. Then levies a vague accusation at Ulrich saying, It was you. At first he is frightened, but then grows angry, shouting, It was you! He holds up his coin while Charlotte looks at the one she found in the bunker. That night, Ulrich's daughter Marta has her own bizarre encounter. Earlier in the day, Ulrich asked Marta if it was possible that her boyfriend Killian slipped her and her friends some drugs something which would explain the bizarre event they witnessed in the bunker. Although Marta was adamant they saw what they saw, she begins to have her doubts and pays Killian a visit. He is offended by the accusation and realizes his suspicions of her were right all along. You were only with me to rile up your parents, Killian says. As she leaves, Marta encounters Jonas in the woods. Growing frustrated with their strange encounters, she demands, Why won't you tell me how we know each other? Actually, we've always known each other, Jonas says. He slowly approaches as he shares memories from Marta's past. The time Magnus knocked her tooth out in kindergarten. Or her third grade field trip where Marta got so homesick her mother had to pick her up. Jonas concludes by saying, Where I come from, you and I have the same past. Marta writes him off as crazy until he reveals that he knows what she saw after running from the cave. I know that you saw yourself last night in the forest, Jonas says. Her future self told him this. Beginning to believe, Marta follows Jonas so he can show her how everything is connected. Through the cave and into the tunnels, Jonas takes her to a familiar metal door. 
though rather than sic mundus creatus est, this one says erit lux, or there will be light. On the other side, they find themselves in 2052, greeted by a post-apocalyptic Winden. She told me to take you here, Jonas says, that she'd explain it to you. Then, a middle-aged Marta arrives and welcomes them to the future. In 1954, on Jonas's homeworld, a young Tranta Nielsen, Ulrich's father, walks alone by the Winden Cave. There, he is approached by the unknown man, traveling as a trio. You've grown, Tranta, he says as though he's known Tranta for a long time. The man claims to have known Tranta's mother, Agnes, long ago. When Tranta asks who he is, the man says he was never given a name, though he is the one that chose Tranta's. The man hands Tranta a bracelet that belonged to his mother, a mother who has been missing for some time. Tranta leaves. He is unsure but suspects he just met his father. Later, Tranta sits alone at the lake in contemplation. He is approached by Yana, and the two open up to one another. Tranta never knew his father, but his mom always said he's a bad person. Yana asks what it was like growing up in a home. Words are unnecessary as Tranta shows the cigarette burns on his arm. He says he doesn't even want to know if the man from this morning is his dad, and he's glad his mom is gone. They are interrupted by Claudia's arrival. Tranta leaves his future wife's side to hold hands with his future mistress. In another part of town, the trio continues their work. They approach a government official currently refusing to provide Mr. Doppler with the building permit he needs to finish construction on the nuclear plant. After some persuasion, the man signs the document. Jonas's mother Hannah, having escaped from her life in 2020, is enjoying a new one in 1954. She is going by the name Katerina, stolen from her rival, and carries on an affair with a young Egon Tiedemann. However, both seem to have unique desires from the relationship. I love you, Egon says. Hannah simply responds with a smile. Attempting to maintain romance, Egon gifts Hannah with a St. Christopher necklace, the same one Katerina's mother wears in 1987. Egon's wife, meanwhile, missing her own mistress Agnes, Tranta's mother, comes to the police station with some potential evidence. Agnes went missing at the same time as the local minister, Hanno Tauber. Before disappearing, Agnes mentioned her husband was a man of God, and in her things, Doris found a handkerchief with the letters HT on it. Could this Hanno Tauber be her husband, and could he have stolen her away? This would be worrying, as Agnes said her husband was a bad man. A bitter Egon offers no support or answers. Doris goes to the church to investigate. However, inside she finds Agnes's true husband, the trio. She asks if they might have information on the missing minister or Agnes. She feigns concern for Tranta, saying she's hoping to track down the boy's mother. However, the trio knows her real interest lies in the woman herself, saying, The ways of the heart cannot be explained. It does what it wants. Just ask your husband. The man then tells her that Egon, her husband, is having an affair. Meanwhile, Egon gets some startling news. Hannah visits a doctor and learns she is pregnant. She informs Egon, but he does not handle the news well. This embitters Hannah, who says, I thought you were harmless, but you're all the same. You're all smug and useless. Later, before Egon and Hannah permanently part ways, she lets him know that she won't be keeping the baby, and that she's come to the realization that she does not need anyone. Something an older Jonas told her just before she left 2020. Egon leaves her some money and a note on where to find Mrs. Obendorf someone who can help terminate the pregnancy. At Mrs. Obendorf's, Hannah meets a young girl who is there for the same services. My mother says they go to hell, the ones that are gotten rid of, the girl says. Hannah believes hell is what we make for ourselves here on Earth. The girl introduces herself as Helena Albers. When Hannah introduces herself as Katerina, Helena comments that it's a very beautiful name. Hannah laughs, knowing she just planted the seed for Helena to eventually name her own daughter Katerina. Helena then notices the St. Christopher necklace around Hannah's neck and says, A nice thought. Someone carrying us on our journey. Someone watching over us. The exchange seems to stir something in Hannah, and she decides to keep the baby. After Helena is called into Mrs. Obendorf's office, Hannah leaves the necklace with Helena's things and goes. After losing his mistress, Egon loses a wife as well. At home, Doris tells him she wants a divorce. 
That night, Claudia and Tranta find Egon alone, drinking. When Claudia asks where her mother is, Egon simply replies, The way of the heart cannot be explained. It does what it wants. Parroting what Doris told him earlier that day. Tranta tells Claudia to leave him, and upstairs, the two get closer. In another world, in 2052, Jonas and Marta join an older Marta in a bunker. Inside, the older Marta has tracked the complicated Winden family tree with chalk. Young Marta notices names crossed out, and her older self explains that these are the people who will die. They will be victims of the apocalypse now just two days away. However, the older Marta says, Both of you can stop the apocalypse if you stop the barrels from being opened at the nuclear plant. Then what? Jonas asks. Eva, Marta's older self, told him that he'd be able to bring his Marta back. Jonas wants to know when that part of the plan happens. The middle-aged Marta gives some bad news. Eva lied. Only one world can be saved. Not wanting to believe any of this, the younger Marta leaves. Before Jonas can follow her, middle-aged Marta makes an attempt at appealing to Jonas. This is exactly what you wanted. You and Marta. In this world, the two of you are not impossible. Jonas runs after Marta. He consoles her and explains that he knows exactly how she's feeling. He assures her that there's a way to straighten everything out, and he won't stop looking for it. As Jonas and Marta return to 2019, Marta's older self is visited by this world's Noah. He looks at the family tree where Jonas and Marta's names lead into the infinity symbol, joining both worlds. We are all born of him, Noah says. You gave him life, and he will give us ours. Him, Agnes, Tranta, Jana, Ulrich, Katerina, you. The infinity symbol represents Jonas and Marta's child, the trio. The unknown man and Agnes will birth Tranta. Tranta and Jana lead to Ulrich. Ulrich and Katerina lead to Marta. An endless cycle where Marta is the beginning and end of the family tree. She is her own great-great-grandmother. She is Eva. Her son plays an important role in the knot between both worlds. Not just as a biological link between them, but also someone who ensures that events in the cycle carry on as planned. In Eva's lair, he currently sits, authoring the Traketra notebook, which guides so many across time and space in the town of Winden. In 2019, Jonas and Marta go to her home. Marta reveals that the moment they first met at school, she had a feeling like they knew each other as though from a dream. She asks what Marta was like in Jonas's world. Then they kiss and make love. Another Marta, having just abandoned older Jonas, Magnus, Bartush, and Francisca in 1888, returns to Adam in 2053. It was Adam and Sigmundus that sent her to 1888, and, as an older Magnus reveals, ordered her to provide younger Jonas with cesium before leaving him. Before Marta and Adam talk, Agnes says farewell to Sylvia, the girl who will soon become her mother. Magnus stabilizes the god particle, and Agnes leaves. Afterward, Marta tells Adam she did what he asked, and he must now hold up his end of the bargain. He is going to show her the origin. Adam takes Marta to his, or Jonas's, childhood home. In the room where, in Marta's world, she and Jonas consummated their relationship, Adam reveals she became pregnant. Her child is the origin, the bridge between both worlds. In 2020, Claudia Tiedemann buries her daughter Regina, who was just killed by Claudia's ex-lover, Tranta. She returns home to find a visitor, her counterpart from Eva's world. This other Claudia tells her not to trust Jonas. Jonas does not know it yet, but he will one day want to destroy the knot, and with it, both worlds. Eva wants to save both worlds. Claudia counters that Jonas said they saved the world by changing one small thing. That was a lie, the other Claudia says. In a positive feedback loop, Claudia's older self told Jonas this lie who then told it to younger Claudia. Finally, the other Claudia hands this world's Claudia the Triketra Notebook, recently authored by the trio. Everything she needs to know is in there. Before leaving, the visitor tells Claudia that she'll have to lead Jonas, Noah, and Elizabeth down the same path again and again to preserve the knot. Adam can never be allowed to untie it. Preserved in this endless cycle of events, both worlds can continue their existence as bleak as it may be. Claudia, now part of Eva's cause, will preserve the knot in her world 
while this other Claudia does the same in hers. Gil here, just wanted to take a quick break to remind you, if you're enjoying this video, please go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified the next time we release a video. Back to the recap. In 1987, a young Charlotte has an important conversation with H.G. Tonhaus, her grandfather. He reveals that he is not her biological grandfather and does not know who her parents are. His son, daughter-in-law, and granddaughter were killed in a car accident years earlier. However, that same night, two strange women gave him Charlotte as a baby, along with a pocket watch engraved for Charlotte. Thrown for a loop, Charlotte leaves Tonhouse to sit at the bus stop. There, she meets a young Peter, who will be her husband 33 years later. He reveals that his mother died recently. Just before passing, she told Peter that his father was in Winden, which led him here. Later, he will find the Doppler residence with the hopes of finally meeting his father. Katerina, also in 1987, visits her husband at the institution, which has held him for 34 years. She tells him to wait at the entrance. I'll get you out of here tonight at 10, she says. Ulrich simply says, I'm sorry for everything. Neither of them are aware that this is the last time they will ever see each other. In order to free Ulrich, Katerina will need a key card. So she follows her mother home and threateningly brandishes a knife, demanding the card. In their struggle, Katerina slips, calling this woman her mom. Disturbed by a grown woman claiming to be her daughter, Helena Albers runs. Katerina knocks Helena out with a rock. Thinking their struggle finished, she begins looking for the key card. Recovering quickly, Helena yells, The devil sent you. You're not real. As she kills the woman she does not know is her daughter from the future. As Katerina dies, her hand uncurls, leaving behind the St. Christopher medal. 32 years later, Magnus will tease his sister Marta about a dead woman in the lake. They will not know they are speaking of their mother's corpse. Around the same time, Jonas and Marta will find her medal left behind and buried in the sand. Later, Ulrich will wait at the institution's entrance, just as Katerina told him to. In 2020, Elizabeth is sick of going with Peter to the containment site in search of her sister and her mother. They are dead, she insists. Leaving Peter, she goes back to the trailer alone, where she finds a strange man stealing from them. He overpowers and restrains her. Before he can do more, Peter arrives and attempts to stop him. Even with Elizabeth lending a hand, they are unable to stop the man from murdering Peter. Noah's prophecy that Peter will be killed is fulfilled. Full of rage, Elizabeth violently kills the stranger and with nowhere else to go, finds Noah at the cave. In 2053, Elizabeth, now hardened by living decades in the post-apocalyptic world, prepares to enter the God Particle with her mother, who is also her daughter, Charlotte. Before leaving, they tearfully say goodbye to Francisca, who is Elizabeth's sister and Charlotte's daughter. In 2019, Jonas and Marta are intent on stopping the apocalypse on her world. However, as they climb through the nuclear plant's fence, Marta gets a scratch under her eye. The Marta that rescued Jonas had the same scratch. Realizing that this Marta is becoming the one he already met, Jonas concludes that they are changing nothing. They are simply retreading the same steps that will lead to this world's apocalypse. They're all lying, Jonas shouts, before insisting they return to Eva and demand the truth. Before entering the cave, Marta asks Jonas what he will do if there really can be only one world. With Jonas remaining silent, Marta answers for him. You decided long ago you want to go back to your world. I didn't want any of this, Jonas says. Moving closer, Marta says, last night, you didn't want that? Jonas says, this is wrong, and I'm wrong here, before Marta tries to prove otherwise with a kiss. So this is wrong, huh? Marta asks. Jonas is, again, silent. Marta walks into the cave and Jonas follows. Back in Eva's lair, Jonas demands that he wants to go back to his world. Eva says there is no way back for him, and repeats a monologue Jonas previously heard from Adam. A human being lives three lives. The first one ends with the loss of naivete, the second with the loss of innocence, and the third with the loss of life itself. Then, Eva adds, yours ends here and now. The middle-aged Marta enters the room. You have accomplished what you were sent to this world for, Eva says. 
Marta exclaims that they've accomplished nothing. She said we have to stop the apocalypse. You'll understand when it's time, the middle-aged Marta says. Then another Marta enters the room, one with a fresh scar matching both her older selves' faces. She tells Marta, I'm sorry, then draws a gun and shoots Jonas. He dies in Marta's arms, just as his Marta died in his. Before passing, Jonas hands her the St. Christopher necklace. I'll make this right, Marta promises. Jonas dies, and Marta mourns over his body, both in their rightful place at the center of two family trees, as Adam and Eva, connecting both worlds. In Jonas's home world, in 2020, moments before the apocalypse, Marta dies in his arms. Jonas is not rescued by a Marta from another world. He runs to the basement just before his house is engulfed by the apocalyptic force. These are the memories of a living Jonas, now 33 years older and surviving in 1888. Haunted by these memories, he wakes as though from a nightmare. Then, he rereads the letter supposedly written by Marta, handed to Jonas by a young Noah. Dear Jonas, you promised to make everything right again. I want you to know you will do that. You must never lose hope that there is a way out of this maze. A way to save me and you. But we both have to make sacrifices do unimaginable things, to untie the knot at the end. Each fate in this knot is tied to the next, a thread, red like blood, that connects all our deeds, in light and in shadow. But the apocalypse must take place. You must let me die so I can live. We have to let some things go before they find their way back to us. We are a perfect match. Never believe anything else. Jonas burns the letter. On Marta's world, mere hours remain until the apocalypse. Charlotte, in her investigation of the unidentified body, finds that Helga's penny and the one in the bunker are identical. She tells Ulrich that a microscopic investigation shows that, somehow, they are one and the same. Beginning to believe the truth, Ulrich races to the morgue and looks at the unidentified body. The boy has a scar on his chin, just like Ulrich's brother. He realizes that this is, in fact, Mads. His younger brother was somehow killed, and his body transported from 1986 to 2019. Ulrich interrogates Helga, who sputters, She said I had to do it. Send him to the future to fill the gaps. He also says that he must stop Ulrich. Not quite understanding, Ulrich lets Helga go, but follows him. Into the cave and into the tunnels. In 2053... In Jonas's world, after being told her future child is the origin, Marta is held captive by Adam. He tells her how he realized that paradise is really eternal darkness, in which nothing exists. But for that, the apocalypse must happen, in my world and in yours. Then, as he did with Agnes, Charlotte, and Elizabeth, Adam sends Francisca and Magnus into the God Particle to fill more gaps, to ensure events occur as they must. So Adam and Marta end up, and all other pieces land, where they must for this plan to succeed. Another Marta, still in her world, returns home after witnessing Jonas's death. As she scrubs blood from her hands, she bumps into her brother Magnus. He comforts her and chides her for worrying their mother. Then, struggling to get Jonas's blood out of her hair, she cuts much of it off, taking one step closer to becoming the Marta that rescued Jonas before the apocalypse, or the one that killed him. After a heart-to-heart -heart with her mother, Marta leaves to stop the apocalypse. At the Tiedemann home, Alexander comes clean to his son about his past. He tells Bartosz that his real name is Boris. 33 years ago, he accidentally killed a man and to avoid justice, took the man's identity to become Alexander. Bartosz asks if his mother knew. She is the best thing that ever happened to him. She saved me from all that, he says, and I never even told her the truth. He says he's sorry before Bartosz walks away. Later, after one confession, Alexander is ready for another. He calls Charlotte, and rather than destroy her life, per Hannah's request, he asks her to come to the plant. He intends to open the barrels at the plant and confess to a cover-up, including hidden nuclear waste. He is unaware that this will play a part in triggering the apocalypse. 
Still at home, Bartosz is visited by Marta. She tells him about everything, including the impending apocalypse. After some pleading, Bartosz agrees to help stop his father from opening the barrels. After he gets no answer trying to call his father, they take off for the nuclear plant by bike. However, on the way, they are stopped by an older Magnus and Francisca from Jonas's world. They were sent from the future by Adam to ensure events occur in accordance with the cycle. They tell Marta that Eva lied to her. Eva does not want to stop the apocalypse. In fact, she will make it happen. But, they tell her, they can show her how to change things. All she has to do is come with them, trust Jonas, and rescue Jonas from the apocalypse on his world a future that the now dead Jonas already experienced. She goes with Magnus and Francisca, leaving Bartosz behind. In Jonas's world, 2020, Claudia follows a map left for her by the other Claudia to find the god particle in the nuclear plant. As she reaches for it, someone yells for her to stop. She turns and sees that it is a young Jonas alive. He explains that he hopes to stabilize the god particle so he can go back in time to save everyone and stop the apocalypse. He is excited when he realizes Claudia has the time machine, the one she took with her to the bunker, but is disappointed to see it is now broken. Per the other Claudia's guidance, this Claudia must not allow Jonas to succeed in stabilizing the god particle yet. She must perpetuate the knot. To earn his trust and ensure he follows her, Claudia tells him that she can help save Marta. In Eva's world, 2052, the scarred Marta has just recently killed Jonas. Her older self offers comfort, saying, I know what you're feeling, but you'll learn to let him go. Everything will run its course, just as fate determined, for our world and his. Then, with Eva and her middle-aged self looking over her shoulder, Marta writes the letter that Jonas will burn in 1888. Knowing a living Jonas will receive this letter, Marta asks how he can still be alive in his world, considering she killed him. Eva draws an infinity symbol, explaining that both worlds exist in a time loop, represented by both loops she's drawn. They meet at a junction in time, the moment where Marta either rescues Jonas from the apocalypse, or doesn't. In either case, the loop continues in both worlds. And in fact, both choices exist in overlapping realities. Marta rescues Jonas from the apocalypse. He goes to her world and dies. Simultaneously, Marta does not rescue Jonas from the apocalypse. He grows up becomes stranded in 1888, and eventually becomes Adam. Both realities occur over and over. Eva explains, Adam has tried to sever this entanglement for the past 33 years. So what is growing inside you will never come to be. But it is impossible. Our worlds cannot be separated from one another. Every step Jonas takes is guided by us. He cannot escape his fate. In order to ensure the cycle continues and the knot is maintained, Eva gathers her followers and and sends each to various points of the timeline in her or Adam's world. Claudia goes to Adam's world to ensure his Claudia guides Jonas and the others on the right path. Noah introduces this world's Elizabeth to his younger self. The others play similar roles. In Adam's world, 2053, Marta is restrained beneath a machine built by Sigmundus. Adam explains that it will focus the energy from both apocalypses, from either world, to destroy Marta and her future son, thereby destroying the knot. Jonas activates the machine. As Marta is engulfed by the energy, Eva's trio travels to both worlds simultaneously ensuring both apocalypses occur. With Marta having left with Magnus and Francisca, no one stops Alexander from opening the barrels for Charlotte. The young Magnus and Francisca of her world watch as they are engulfed by the apocalyptic explosion. In 1890, after two years, Jonas continues work on stabilizing the god particle. Bartosz is frustrated. He wants to go home and doubts Jonas even wants to stop the apocalypse anymore. Leaving Jonas, he walks through the forest and runs into a woman. Bartosz does not realize she is from the future and will be the mother to his children. Silja, having stolen Marta's 1800s garb, travels from 2053 to find Bartosz here. Fourteen years later, Bartos watches as Silja gives birth to a boy she names Hanno Tauber. He will grow up to be Noah. 
Six years later, Soja dies while giving birth to Noah's sister, Agnes. After a year passes, Bartosz is reunited with his wife when Jonas's mother, Hannah, arrives with a child, Soja. This is Egon's daughter, who Hannah decided to keep after her run-in with Helena Albers. Bartosz escorts Hannah to see her son, but warns her that Jonas has changed and traveling has left its mark. Hannah introduces Jonas to his younger sister. He coldly asks how they found him, and Hannah explains that she was visited by a woman named Eva. This Eva explained that Jonas was looking for Hannah. She admits to Jonas that he was right. It's my fault, she says. I ruined everything, but now I'm here. Jonas pulls her hand from his face, and as a tear falls, tells Bartosz to prepare chambers for them. That night, Jonas visits his mother. He tells her that Silja doesn't belong here. All the pieces have to be in position. She's in the wrong place. So are you, Jonas says before killing his mother. Then he takes Silja. She will be sent to the future where she will grow up. In 2053, she will be sent back to 1890 and meet Bartosz in the forest. In 2021, as they dig through the tunnels under Winden Cave, Elizabeth asks Noah to tell her about paradise. He tells her that paradise will be free of pain and suffering. Everything we've ever done is forgotten there. Any pain we've ever felt is erased and all the dead live. Adam will keep his promise the passage will open. In 2023, Jonas is still working on stabilizing the God Particle with Claudia, but he has lost hope. He returns to his childhood home and hangs a noose from the beam that once held his father's lifeless body. As Jonas hangs, Noah barges into the room and cuts the rope, rescuing him. Noah explains that because Jonas's older self exists in the future, he cannot die. Time will not allow it. He proves this by handing Jonas a gun. Putting the gun to his head and pulling the trigger, nothing happens. Even though, as Noah proves, the gun is fully functional. Elizabeth and I found the passage. You must keep your promise, Noah says, before escorting Jonas to the tunnel. He goes on to say, it will open again, and then you will, then Adam, will lead us to paradise. He said we will become friends before you betray me. Seventeen years later, Jonas and Noah are friends. The two work on the machine with Claudia while she continues to secretly sabotage their efforts. Noah asks for Jonas's thoughts on why the machine isn't working and suggests maybe Claudia does not want it to. He asks Jonas why he trusts Claudia and Jonas counters by asking why Noah trusts Adam. He lied to you, Jonas says. There is no paradise. There's no world other than this one. I know you think I will become him, but I won't. The portal will work. I've seen it. In the future, everything repeats itself. But if I can travel back, I can change everything. My older self tried it before, but this time, everything's different. I've changed the components in the passage. This time, it'll work. Noah is skeptical, as these promises came from Claudia. He points out that she disappears for days at a time. He wonders how she knows all the things she knows. They are unaware that there is another world and Claudia regularly meets with her counterpart from it. And now pregnant Elizabeth asks Noah to come inside. Before joining Elizabeth, Noah warns Jonas they cannot trust Claudia. Meanwhile, Claudia meets with her other self. After their usual check-in, Claudia asks her counterpart, have you ever met my older self? When the other Claudia says no, Claudia realizes that her counterpart's future does not exist she will kill her. Before doing so, Claudia says she remembers what her older self told her, that if everything goes right, Regina, her daughter, will live. I just can't believe that by that she meant her suffering was to repeat over and over forever. Claudia says as she raises a gun, she continues, there must be a way to untie the knot without destroying all life within it, a way for Regina to live really live. I think neither Eva nor Adam know that path, but I'll find it in my world or yours. 
Then she kills her other self. Claudia steals the time-traveling orb and uses it to visit the other world and see Eva. She pretends to be Eva's Claudia and receives her latest order. Eva hands her blueprints for the time machine and asks her to hand them to Claudia from Jonas's world, who will then give them to H.G. Tonhouse. Eva herself retrieved these blueprints from Claudia's world when the trio burned down the Sigmundus Lodge. Later, an older Claudia will deliver the blueprints to H.G. Tonhouse in 1953. One year later, in 2041, Elizabeth asks Noah to tell her about Paradise again. As he does, an older Elizabeth joined by her mother and daughter Charlotte, arrives from the future. They were sent by Adam. The two steal Elizabeth and Noah's child, along with the pocket watch engraved for Charlotte. Elizabeth holds the child she spent so little time with and ensures her younger self will suffer the same fate. Decades earlier, on the night H.G. Tonhaas loses his family, Elizabeth and Charlotte will deliver the baby to him. He will raise her as his granddaughter. She will grow up to be Charlotte and in 2041 will kidnap herself again. Noah and Elizabeth find their child missing. Furious, Noah runs to Jonas and demands to know where his daughter is. Jonas does not know, but Noah no longer trusts him. Adam always promised that Jonas would be a friend until he betrayed Noah. Noah believes this is the betrayal. He promises Elizabeth that he will find their daughter. After a long journey to find the missing daughter, Noah arrives in 1920. He visits an older Jonas now going by the name Adam. Adam wastes no time in recruiting Noah back to his cause. He firmly repeats that he did not take Charlotte, but Noah was right about Claudia lying to them. To prove his case, Adam tells Noah to look at his Triketra notebook where he will see pages missing. Pages removed by Claudia. Adam explains that Noah must find those pages, which will lead to Charlotte and Paradise. Noah is unaware that in the coming years, he will find those pages, and he will meet his daughter shortly before he is killed by his sister. In 2052, Claudia has finally allowed Jonas to stabilize the God Particle. She tells Jonas that everything must happen again the exact same way. Jonas has to lead his younger self down the same path. But, Claudia promises, you'll finally be able to change everything. She tells Jonas that Tonhaus will repair the old, broken time machine. Then, Jonas must use it to destroy the passage and with it, the knot. Claudia lies and says, you'll succeed this time. She adds, Jonas, you must never lose hope. After Jonas leaves, Claudia rips some pages out of the Triketra notebook and the cycle repeats. Jonas guides his younger self and closes the passage, just as he has in every previous cycle. And just as in every previous cycle, the passage closes, but the knot remains intact. Jonas fails again. A young Jonas holds Marta as she dies in his arms. Older Jonas rescues his friends from the apocalypse and strands them in 1888. He grows older. He goes by the name Adam, and he travels to 2053, where he holds captive a young Marta from another world. Adam destroys her and her unborn son in the hopes of destroying the knot. Once again, Jonas fails. He still exists. His world still exists. This can't be, he says. Then he is greeted by a familiar face. An older Claudia arrives to explain the truth, to show him the true origin and the true path towards untying the knot. In 2020, just as the apocalypse hits, Marta rescues Jonas and brings him to her world. This reality overlaps with another where Marta does not rescue Jonas and is instead stopped by Bartosz, who is sent by Eva. The Marta that rescues Jonas goes on to be killed by Adam. The other Marta follows Bartosz to 2052 and once again meets Eva. Some pain is never forgotten, Eva says. It brands us for our entire life. You and I, we share that pain. We bear the same scars. Eva slashes a knife across young Marta's face, giving her the scar worn by her older selves. Eva explains that they all must die so they can be reborn. All events in the cycle must be repeated so the knot can be perpetuated. So Marta's son can live. Eva explains that Marta carries the origin inside her and then invites her future son into the room. Understanding that the knot must exist for her son to live, Marta follows Eva's instructions to kill Jonas and repeat the cycle's events. Adam, still shocked to see he still exists, 
and shocked to see Claudia alive after he had her killed, finally learns the truth. Claudia explains that the origin is not his and Marta's son. The origin is not a connection between both worlds, as Adam thought, but is something from outside these worlds. Both worlds originate from a third world the origin world. In this other world, a man named H.G. Tonhouse lost his son, daughter-in-law, and granddaughter in a car accident. He became obsessed with breaking the rules of time and space to bring them back. Over more than a decade, he built a time machine. However, when he activated it, it split and destroyed his world, creating Adam and Eva's two worlds. The only way to destroy the knot is by preventing Tonhouse from inventing time travel to begin with on the origin world. In the sick Mundus lair, now destroyed by the trio, Claudia tells Adam that he has tried to destroy the knot an infinite number of times. However, this moment, the two of them speaking, has never happened before. Claudia learned all this over her 33-year journey to understand how a family tree can be born of itself over and over. In that journey, she also learned that not everyone is part of the knot. Some, like Tranta or Charlotte, are part of Marta and Jonas's cyclical, impossible lineage. They are part of the knot, and if it is destroyed, they will cease to exist. However, anyone who already existed in the origin world, outside the knot, would be safe. Standing over Regina's grave in 2053, Claudia and Tranta discuss this. For years, Tranta believed he was Regina's father. However, Regina existed in the origin world and isn't a part of the knot. Unlike Tranta, who is Jonas and Marta's grandson, this means that if the knot is destroyed, Claudia's daughter Regina gets to live. Claudia then sends Tranta to 2020 so he can kill a suffering Regina, perpetuating the cycle one more time. Claudia explains to Adam that just like him and Eva, she had to preserve the knot and repeat the cycle so she could reach this point now. And although events happen differently or at different times between worlds, they happen nonetheless. In 1953, in Adam's world, Ulrich arrives from the future and attempts to kill a young Helga. In 1986, in Eva's world, Ulrich arrives from the future and attempts to kill a middle-aged Helga. In both cases, he fails. In Adam's world, he lives the rest of his life in an institution. In Eva's world, an older Helga intervenes, killing Ulrich. Helga then finds the time-traveled copies of his penny on Ulrich's body, after which Claudia arrives to guide him. Still in 2053, Claudia finally reaches the ultimate reveal of her conversation with Adam. During the apocalypse, there is a loophole. Time stands still for a fraction of a second, and for a moment, the chain of cause and effect is broken. Eva is aware of this and has used the loophole to send her younger self in one direction or another to preserve the knot. Claudia has used it as well to be here now, talking to Adam. She hands Adam the orb and explains that he'll need to use the loophole to send Jonas with Marta to the origin world. There, they can stop Tonhouse from ever inventing time travel. They can destroy the knot. In 2020, the apocalypse begins. Adam kills Marta and leaves. As Jonas watches her die, the Adam who just learned the truth from Claudia arrives. Why are you still here? She's dead, Jonas yells. What more do you want from me? Adam uses the orb to teleport them to 2019 in Eva's world. He explains everything and tells Jonas he needs to stop an older Magnus and Francisca from recruiting Marta. With little time to spare, Jonas begins his final journey. Meanwhile, Adam heads to Eva's lair and burns it, just as he has in previous cycles. Then, he uses her god particle and travels to 2052. Eva greets him and expects him, as he's done in every previous cycle, to kill her. When he hesitates, Eva forces him to point the gun at her chest. When he hesitates still, Eva pulls the trigger, but the gun does not fire. Adam reveals a handful of bullets. He never loaded the pistol. Eventually, Eva understands that the Endless Knot is finally coming undone. The two mortal enemies embrace and prepare for their worlds to be erased. Jonas, intent on his mission, finds Marta standing in front of the older Magnus and Francisca. He quickly activates the orb, places it in his pocket, and runs to Marta. Just as the device triggers, he grabs Marta and the two are transported to Jonas's world. After each saw the other die, the two are reunited. 
Jonas explains that it is June 21st, 1986, the day Tannhaus creates the time machine on the origin world. Although it takes some insistence from Marta, Jonas explains what they are really doing. He says, you and I are the reason everything happens the way it does. Why it happens again and again. Because you can't let go of what you want, and I can't let go of what I want. But we are the mistake, the glitch in the matrix. They head into the caves and through the sick Mundus doors. Inside, they wait for the passage to open. In that moment, there will be a bridge between the three worlds and they'll be able to go to the origin. In a quiet moment, Jonas asks if the Jonas on Marta's world was different. She does not answer. Both watch as a tear rolls down the other's cheek. In the origin world, Tannhaus activates the machine. In Jonas's world, the tunnel begins to open. In a place between time and space, Jonas wakes up. He calls for Marta. She is in the same place, but neither can find the other. Suddenly, Jonas sees a window open and he is given a glimpse of Marta as a child. She is with her mother, Katerina. The child Marta sees Jonas while Katerina sees nothing, just the inside of their closet. At the same time, Marta, through a similar window, sees a young Jonas with his father, Mikkel. The windows close. Marta and Jonas finally find each other, returning from two paths intersecting in front of a third. They walk down the third path and activate the orb. On November 8th, 1971, in the Origin World, Merrick argues with his father, H.G. Tonhaus. Before leaving Tonhaus in the middle of a rainstorm, Merrick angrily says, You told me the world outside was full of secrets, and what we know is a drop in an infinite ocean. At least you were right about that. You may know everything about Einstein, Rosen, Bridges, and Black Holes, but about me, you know absolutely nothing about me. Merrick and Sonia, with their child, drive on a dangerous road until Jonas and Marta appear in the middle of the street. Merrick swerves to avoid them. He gets out of the car, angry at first, but softens when he gets a closer look at the broken Jonas and Marta. Is everything okay? He asks. Unsure how to convince this man to return to his father, Jonas says the road is closed. There was an accident. Unconvinced, Merrick starts walking back to the car. Jonas tries again and says, what we know is a drop. What we don't know is an ocean. Marta adds, your father loves you. He would do anything for you. A feeling dawns on Merrick. He tells his wife the bridge is closed and they go back to his father. Your son thinks he met a pair of angels, Sonia says. I don't know why, but I suddenly just got this feeling, Merrick tells his father. The two embrace. Tannhaus's pain is gone. He will never invent the time machine. He will never create the knot. As Merrick and Sonia head upstairs, Tannhaus holds his granddaughter, Charlotte. Do you think it worked? Marta asks Jonas. Inside the light, I saw you as a child. You were looking towards me as if you could see me too, Jonas says. Marta remembers this from her childhood. It wasn't a dream, she says. She goes on, do you think anything of us will remain? Or is that what we are, a dream, and we never really existed? All Jonas can say is, I don't know. As they begin to fade, he tells her, we are a perfect match. Never believe anything else. They hold hands as they are erased by time. The knot is destroyed. Their worlds disappear. There is a red house. In one world, it was Jonas's childhood home. In another, it was Marta's. On the origin world, it is Regina's home, the daughter of Claudia and Burned Doppler. She has some familiar faces over for a dinner party. Torbin begins telling them all the story of what happened to his eye when they are interrupted by a power outage. Hannah, pregnant in this world, is disturbed. She sees a yellow raincoat and is overcome by the feeling of deja vu. This is exactly what she dreamt last night. The lights flickered, there was a loud bang, and then suddenly everything was dark. The world ended, but it was good that it ended. They ask Hannah if she and Torben have chosen a name for their child yet. Hannah says, I think Jonas is a beautiful name. Thanks for joining me in reliving the events of the final season to this amazing series. Feel free to check out some of my other videos covering Dark, and if you enjoyed this one, 
please go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified the next time we release a video. Thanks for watching, and see you on the next One Take.